Moon Studios' Ori and the Will of the Wisps has left its mark on the platforming community. It is revered as one of the most distinctive, enticing games of the genre in recent years. Ori and the Will of the Wisps is a platforming adventure metroidvania, and is a sequel to Moon Studios' 2015 Ori and the Blind Forest. In this game, you play as Ori, a spirit guardian of the forest. It is your task to prevent decay from further spreading through the forest by reuniting five wisps that have been scattered across various regions. Using your dexterity and agility, you traverse through the world meeting a wide range of unique characters, beasts, and spirits on your path. Bringing in its striking visuals and fluid fighting mechanics, Ori is a challenging yet satisfying platformer that allows for constant customization and an always exciting exploratory process. But what stands out among all of this is the high level of interactivity with the game environment itself. While interactivity and flow are a central part to any platforming game, Ori makes its name through its especially lively surroundings. Nature is imbued into nearly every aspect of the game, from the creatures that wander the forest grounds, to the hot sands Ori walks across, to the piles of powder atop the wintry snow. It is this life, this organic matter, of the game that made it feel so unique compared to other platformers. As proven time and time again in game studies, video games do not exist in vacuums. As Bogos asserted in his 2008 study on video game rhetoric, games are avenues for discussion, practice, and value representation. A video game's elements such as its environment are no exception. While an environment's primary purpose is to provide scaffolding for the video game's boundaries and constraints, environments also serve secondary functions such as inspiring emotion, offering familiarity, or setting a specific context for a game itself. Its aesthetics especially play a significant role in our emotional response to a game, shaping the way we experience it. Ori's intentional use of organic matter and emphasis on ecology provides a unique gameplay experience not often felt in the platforming genre. To understand the full impact of what Ori has done, it's important to understand the historical context and background of the genre itself. Some notable platformers include Super Meat Boy, Shovel Knight, Mario, and Hollow Knight. For games like Mario and Hollow Knight, some organic material and life are featured, but these environmental aspects serve more as a backdrop to the game rather than a point of interactivity. Other games like Super Meat Boy and Shovel Knight feature apocalyptic ruins and heavy industrial visuals, a common aesthetic trope found in many other platformers. The inclusion of ruins and decay is far from coincidental. Popular German romantic artist Caspar David Friedrich coined the genre and term Fuinen Zensucht, a mix of the German word for ruin and the German word for longing. Huin and Zensuk describes the innate human longing for disintegrating objects, attributing it to our love for the history of a fallen building, a tribute to what once was. While Ori does have some aspects of ruin and decay, this isn't its main focal point. Instead, Ori's appeal comes from its central theme of rejuvenation and celebration of nature and the organic. Rather than a yearning for decomposition and disrepair, Ori instills a longing for life and for wilderness. Ori's treatment and framing of its game environment differs vastly from that of others in its genre. Whereas most games are a PvE, player versus environment style, Ori acts in a player with environment manner. While the game does feature enemies in the game that you can fight and kill for resources with light swords or hammers, you can set opt to use the bash mechanic. Bash allows Ori to cling onto nearby objects like hanging flower lanterns, special blue patches of grass, projectiles shot by enemies, and even enemies themselves. It is a passive ability, meaning it is able to be used at all points of the game, and it is a central piece of the game's mechanics. Bash alters the way in which the player engages and interacts with the environment, transforming what once were obstacles into newfound opportunity. Volatile slimes and encroaching mantai become organic platforms for Ori. Enemy bullets and pellets become stair steps to hard to reach areas. Enemies no longer feel intruding or aggressive, instead they are a means for exploring the world. This more pacifistic way of traversing the game allows for the player to become more connected to their environment. It is not a world full of foes to be slaughtered. Instead, it is one where every creature plays an essential role in aiding you on your journey. In addition to Ori's bash feature, the sequel introduces a new burrowing mechanic, an ability that allows Ori to dive through sand and snow. One of the game's main appeals is its fluidity, as Ori seamlessly switches between running atop the ground before burying into sand, popping right out and flipping through the air. The game mechanics, like borrowing, works alongside the smooth graphics to create an uninterrupted game flow state. But even more than this, it allows Ori to become one with his environment. Whereas other platformers use their environment purely for background purposes, every element of the game and the environment serves a purposeful role in your journey of exploration and discovery. Piles of snow and sand are no longer just decor. 
they are a means of finding hidden treasure and quests. By making the environment organic and flowing, the game is made more dynamic and interactive. This reinforces the idea that Ori is one with his environment, that the world and nature around him is meant to be touched and explored and played with, not a mere static backdrop. The game continues to emphasize the player with environment style by focusing its quests and plot developments on world replenishment and rejuvenation. Many ecologists have critiqued video games for the purely extractful relationship between a player and their environment. Where real world resources are limited and finite, games often provide infinite resources, minimizing the thought and impact that goes behind resource utilization and allocation. While Ori does have seemingly infinite resources, they are not central to gameplay at all. Rather, one of the game's main focuses is on the replenishment of the environment. In order to unlock new areas, Ori must purify the contaminated water by getting the water wheels up and running again. Other times, Ori must clean up overgrown branches and thorns to make areas more accessible, not just for himself, but for the Moki, small mammalian creatures that inhabit the forest. Ori features various optional side quests that continue to build upon the player environment relationship. One of these side quests includes collecting Gorlic ore to rebuild homes and clear areas for the unhoused Gorlic and Moki population. While there are some benefits for the player to embark on the side quest, the majority of the developments that come from the Gorlic ore are purely for the betterment of the lives of the other habitants of the forest. The Gorlic touch development, for example, uses 10 Gorlic ore to add decorative finishes on the glades, and the dwelling repairs development uses 4 Gorlic ore to build houses for the Moki. There's no in-game change aside from the appreciative dialogue from the residents and aesthetic changes to the environment. While the changes are purely visual in nature, the affective impact of the side quest is discernible. These Gorlic ore are often in hard to reach places, making it difficult for the player to find them. Thus, it requires the player to deviate from the main questline for a feature that provides no benefit to them other than aesthetics and improved player environment relationship. This is a rare moment in a platformer where the player can do something purely for the good of the environment and all that live there. It is evident that Ori stands out from its genre for its distinctive aesthetic and highly interactive and dynamic environment. But what does this mean for the genre, or for video games as a whole? What is the greater significance of having an organic and live environment? As mentioned before, games are powerful tools to convey ideas about the greater world around us. Although Ori takes place in a fantastical world, the game still carries significance and messages about the world around us. Professor of Film and Media Studies Alenda Chang talks about video games as mesocosms, a liminal space in between the lab and the real world in an experimental context. She explains that video games are mesocosmic in nature by straddling the real and the fictional. Though these are fictional worlds with fictional rules, they are governed by very real elements and are able to mimic relationships, especially those between humans and non-humans or players in their environment. Ori does just this. Though the game is make-believe in nature, the ideas and lessons it reinforces are anything but. Ori's use of organic matter in its game environment brings to light the importance of ecological and environmental responsibility, the impact of involvement and being one with your environment, and the distinctive difference between working with your environment rather than against it. Games, especially platformers, have been using environments solely as aesthetic backdrops. Ori does away with this formula and evokes emotion and care for its environment through its interplay of its game mechanics, plot, and graphics to create a meaningful story of ecological preservation and perseverance.